what is this? No, this isn't a jellyfish. And no, it's not even just one creature. But if you ever have the pleasure of meeting one of these dastardly beings under the water, well, let's just say that you might find yourself in a world of hurt. Welcome to an episode of Dangerous Doobly Doos. I'm your host, Paul Lee, and this is the Portuguese Man of War, AKA the Blue Bottle. Now, named after the Portuguese colonial warships of the 18th century, this Nadarian really looks like a large ship at full sail. The Man of War is a siphonophore, which means a colony of living polyps. Each part of its body is a separate organism that works together with its other body parts, each called zooids. For example, gastrozooids for digestion and gonozooids for reproduction with other siphonophores. Scientists are actually still learning about these weird and interesting colony creatures that we call siphonophores. In fact, just this year, we discovered another siphonophore in the deep ocean that's 300 feet long, almost three times as long as the longest blue whale. That siphonophore is likely the longest animal in the entire world. But here at Moretus, we don't just talk about any old creature. And so the Portuguese man of war has to be exceptional in its own way. For one, it's extremely dangerous. Man of wars are found in groups of more than a thousand usually, floating around in warm waters all around the world. Their tentacles have been documented reaching down 165 feet long. Worse yet, those tentacles are filled with venom-injecting nematocysts that help the blue bottles paralyze and kill their prey quite quickly. These things can be incredibly painful for humans, ranking at a grade 5 out of 5 in the nematocyst pain scale. These tentacles can also wrap around swimmers, lacerating and even occasionally killing humans. So you and I don't want to get stung by this awful creature, but that doesn't mean we don't wonder how it feels like to be stung. A local Florida woman saves us the trouble and gives her account of the hairy encounter. And yes, it did have to be someone from Florida. She says this, it feels like a combination of an electric shock because it literally does jolt your entire body, a million needles dipped in lava and maybe acid. And it feels like a net, like whatever is hurting you may be all over your entire body and you don't know what to do to get it off. Ouch. That's no way to start 2021. So how do you actually cure one of these things if you're unlucky enough to encounter an angry man of war? Some people recommend using urine, sand, or even removing the nematocysts by scraping them off with an exfoliating brush. But as far as we know now, these actually can make the laceration, pain, and scarring much worse. Recent scientific studies in laboratories have actually confirmed that rinsing the sting with vinegar and then putting the area in about 113 degrees Fahrenheit water for about an hour will both remove the stingers and deactivate the venom that's already injected in your body. The more you know. In addition to its deadly stingers, this creature has quite a few tricks up its sleeve. You might wonder how a creature that floats passively on the surface avoids predators. Sure, the man of war has strong defensive capabilities below the surface, but it's kind of a sitting duck from above and at the surface. What keeps birds and other creatures from attacking from above? Remember, the man of war has no propulsion ability. The answer to this question is actually kind of interesting. The pneumatophores, or gas-filled bladder sacs, let out air if danger is detected at or above the surface. This causes the man of war to sink until the danger is gone, and then it can come back up. Which leads us to our next point, ah, danger, relationships. In this animal world, it's hunt or be hunted. The Portuguese man of war are extremely dangerous to us, other mammals like whales, and even large fish alike but even they have their enemies. The loggerhead turtle eats the man of war very frequently. Sometimes up to 80% of the turtle's documented diet in a day can consist of man of war tentacles. The turtle's skin, tongue, throat, and digestive cavities are just too thick for the man of war's nematocyst to penetrate and cause damage too. The ocean sunfish also is covered in a mucus and has skin too thick to be affected by the man of war's stings. It too can feast on this nadarian, as well as others like jellyfish. Now, beyond traditional predators, we have some, let's say, 
phenomenally intriguing relationships. There is a small fish called the shepherd fish, or what is informally called the man of war fish, that is mostly immune to the venom from the blue bottles. It lives among the defensive stingers, feeding on the smaller and less dangerous tentacles. This is actually a form of symbiosis, as the shepherd fish get a safe place to live from predators and food to eat, while the man of war get other fish that are attracted by the shepherd fish to its waiting tentacles. Cool as this is, there's more. This is where we start to get a little crazy. Not to be outdone, the blanket octopus is immune to the venom of the Portuguese man of war, completely. Baby octopi will tear off man of war tentacles and have been documented to use them in combat against their foes, like swords. They often hold them to spar with one another as well. And even stranger yet, there is a blue sea slug called Glaucus atlanticus that has developed a unique relationship with the man of war. It can eat the man of war's deadly stingers on their tentacles and use them as its own defensive weapons, growing it on its own back. <sighs> what an odd place the ocean is. So beautifully complex, yet so dangerous. Sparring octopi, thieving sea slugs, and living armadas of nature's fishing galleons, the blue bombs. It's almost too fantastical to conceive of, but it's real. So if you ever see a small blue ship sailing at full mast towards you, swim away as fast as you can. The general rule of thumb, where you find one man of war, expect many more nearby. Remember, even a beached blue bottle can sting, so alert the lifeguard and people around you if you see even just one. But I don't really want to mislead you too, or scare you. Man of War sightings aren't too common, and there's no reason for you to be afraid of the beautiful blue. We learn in order to better understand our world and fall in love with the life around us. Just so you know, you know, just for your information and maybe so you don't get stung. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Dangerous Doobly-Doos. Today's question, what's one marine creature you want me to cover in this series? Drop a comment below. As always, thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. Check out our marine conservation apparel store at moretus.com to cop some sustainable merch, like the hoodie I'm wearing, and support the ocean, all while looking clean. Clean vibes, clean looks, clean oceans. Until next time, 